Cho, guys, what is up? It's Teach here coming at you again with another video over on Ark Survival Ascended. And in this video, I'm going to show you 15 plus tips that you can use inside of Ark Survival Ascended in order to make yourself better at the game. Now, these 15 tips are kind of like an inter intermediate advanced level tip. Um, things that a lot of people forget to use and how to use them. Anything from how to power level using an insane uh, XP area or using the proper way to regain stamina to actually lose less resources. So I'm gonna show you all of that right now. If you don't mind, smack that like button, leave a comment below for the algorithm, and then consider subbing to the channel. I'm close to 100K and that's been my dream all along. All right, so my first tip, and this is an easy one actually. So whenever you run, you're actually gonna lose stamina over time. And in order to regain your stamina, your food and water are both going to drain, right? There is nothing that you can do to control that. They are going to drain no matter what. However, there's a little bit of a secret tip, right? So now that my stamina is drained a little bit, if you look, you can see that these both drain as this goes back up. However, you can cut the amount of food and water that you consume when you're actually regenerating that stamina into about a quarter. Now, in order to do that, all you have to do, I'm just gonna show you by continuing to run for a second here, is lay down. When you lay down and regenerate stamina, it actually takes about a quarter of the amount of food and water. So whenever you're running, if you need to, just make sure that you actually rotate and uh, lay down. Because if you lay down, you will quite literally um, lose a lot less stamina. It's going to save you a ton of resources in the long run of the game, especially if you're uh, early game and you don't necessarily have access to your food and your drink uh, recipes, all that kind of stuff. Save you a lot of resources. So that's the first tip. Second tip is actually pretty easy. It's also something that I've shown in other videos before. Your creatures can actually eat anything that is stamina related, right? So if I have a burger and it increases my stamina, I can put that inside of my tame and allow it to eat it. Now that'll both increase its health overall and its stamina. So when I'm in the air, if I use anything that's got a stamina boost to it, you'll notice that if I hold still, come on now, Hold still in the air for a second here. So notice how I'm going down stamina wise. If I feed it to my tame, it's going to continue to rise and you can see that number going up, essentially giving you bonus time in the air while your stamina continues to raise. It'll give you and it'll go up the entire length of it. So if you have a 1000 stamina boosting thing, what'll happen is you can quite literally pop that while you're in the air. and It'll give you a total of a bonus 1000 over time. Now, once you hit your maximum stamina, it'll go back down again. But as long as you are still not at maximum stamina, eating anything for your tame in the air will continue to raise its stamina until it is the highest possible level. Now, tip number three is actually something that's one of my favorite tips because people forget that this is even a thing. And it's actually pretty easy. So when you are moving around inside of Ark, you are constantly losing food and water, right? You are also, whenever you consume food, increasing the amount of poop that you have to take. Now, I know that sounds like a weird thing. However, on the right hand side, if you see that your poop indicator is a little more less uh, bluish than the other ones, I guess it's more white or highlighted. What, what that means is your character has to poop. If you do not poop when that happens, your character is going to continue to drain food and water when they have to poop because they get a constipated debuff. So you have to constantly pay attention to that. Using that plus icon will allow you to poop and allow you to actually save a ton of resources for food and water as well. That is tip number three. Tip number four, we're moving into another one of the tips that is, uh, it's an early game tip more than anything else, but uh, people have a tendency to forget about this. So you can actually use your resources to make something called soap. People don't even know what this is, right? Because you no one ever actually cares about taking dye or anything off of a structure. However, for three polymer and two oil, you can actually make one soap. Now, the reason that this is valuable is when you're early game, you're probably killing a lot of Kairuku or whatever you want to call them, the penguins, in order to get organic polymer. You can use organic polymer to make soap. Now, the benefit of this is that basically you can store soap forever, and then you can take soap and put it inside of your uh, anything that you can use for a uh, industrial grinder, like you see right here, in order to actually get all of that resource back now it's going to give you at a reduced rate so you're only going to get one to three but it allows you to store polymer forever so if you're running out of polymer and you're unable to stack it and stuff like that store it inside of that and or store it in soap and then put it inside of a grinder to actually gain your stuff back it's a huge advantage and it will save you a lot of time in the long run so that is my next tip now the next one 
This one is one that people forget about and I do not know why. One of the most valuable tames in the game is the Pocophthodon, not only for its ability to move faster than quite literally anything inside of Ark. You can see that the jump ability basically allows you to outrun anything inside of the game. However, it's also got a special ability with its imprinting. If you look inside of the Procoptodon's little belly area, it does, just like real life, have a pouch. Now, if a female Procoptodon picks up a baby tame, it will actually hold on to it in its pouch as long as it's small enough, and it will imprint for you. The smaller tames in the game can 100% imprint the full length of the baby inside of the Procoptodon's little pouch. However, most creatures will pop out when they're too big, right around 20 to 30% but it'll give you a free 20 to 30% imprinting bonus, which is a massive, massive advantage. So make sure you're using the kangaroo slash procoptodon in order to actually imprint tames for you. Now, this next tip is one of the most underused things in ARC. It's actually a setting that people forget about. So if I go into my settings, right, and I click on a certain area keyboard for me, you can do this on console as well, by the way, you actually have a predetermined gamma setting. You have a set gamma one, and a set gamma two. If you use these two, you can hover between two gamma values that you determine to be value, AKA what that means is that you can have night vision for one and day vision for the other. A higher gamma value means your screen is gonna get a lot brighter and a lower gamma value is gonna make your screen a lot darker. So basically what you wanna do is you wanna have a gamma two with a key that you want it to be and a key that you want it to be up there in order to have your gamma two is usually your higher one. That's how I think of it in my brain. That means that I need my gamma to be higher at nighttime so I can see better. I'll go ahead and show you set time of day, set time of day. Let's go ahead and go to 2400. Okay, so it's dark right now. If you're going through a darker area inside of this game, you can actually set your gamma to five and that gamma is going to allow you to see better. However, if you have your daytime gamma turned on, gamma two, it's going to be a lot darker and harder to see in the actual game. So what you can do is set those two things for your gamma one and gamma two. So you don't actually have to go through and change it and type in gamma. You can literally just hit a key in order to toggle between two different uh, gamma settings. So that's a huge, huge advantage. So that time of day, let's go with 10 o'clock, right? So you can see that this would be a time you wanted to have a lower gamma so you're not blinded. And then at nighttime, you want to have a higher gamma. So using those settings will save you a lot of time. Now, the next thing that people often forget about inside of Arc is recipes. Recipes in the bottom of my screen down here, you can see I've got the Super Burger, and then I've also got a little drink recipe right here. People do not make recipes enough because not only can they serve as something that will heal you, but they will also give you stamina and whatever resource, whether it's water or food that you want. And you can actually pop both of these to heal way faster than any other way in arc notice how my health is going up really quickly that is because i just ate one of both of those you can actually power heal if you take a bunch of damage or if you're in like a boss battle or something like that and losing heat you can actually compensate by using recipes now recipes can be made inside of your actual cooking pot and then with those recipes you can literally just give yourself boosted stats it's going to save you a ton of trouble and time so Make sure you have recipes, even if they're crappy ones, they're better than eating just raw food, like cooked meat and stuff like that. Save the cooked meat for your tames and make yourself some recipes. Huge, huge advantage. Now, the next thing, this is something that kind of has to be shown to believe. This is a newer thing inside of Ark Survival Ascended. Actually, inside of every single cave, there are increased resource limits. So basically what that means is inside of caves, you will get more resources than outside of caves. So, especially on the map like the island, right? Where I'm sitting over here, I'm looking for the, the bug cave over here so I can actually show you what I'm talking about, right? Um, so if you go inside of a cave, wow, where is it? I can't find the, uh, there it is, okay. I always find it this way. So basically what you can do is go over here and then once you're inside of a cave, this one specifically, this is Swamp Cave, you will get about, let me just give you an approximate guess, right? You will gain, oh, wow, I just, literally highlighted my wrong thing over here. I had the command ready to go. You will gain exponentially more berries. Let me just show you a comparison, right? So this is my Gigantopithecus. I'm gonna go ahead and use this Gigantopithecus and I'm gonna go ahead and harvest one of those. See how I've only got a few berries out of each one of those plants? Not that much. 
However, as soon as I go inside of a cave, there are cave loots. And check this out. I am going to lag myself out of the game from the amount that I get going through this cave. Now, the crazy thing about this is this can be something that you literally just step foot inside the cave for two seconds, and you will probably have enough berries to last yourself a ridiculous amount of time. So, there's almost, I don't know, 20,000 berries in less than 10 seconds. That is new to Ark Survival Ascended. That is a new tip, just so you can use that. Um, it is something that'll be very, very helpful to you, though. Now, on top of that, as long as you are inside of this cave, right? I'm going to go ahead and take off GCM. This cave is called Swamp Cave. Swamp Cave can be very, very dangerous. However, there is a way to avoid it. You normally need a gas mask to go inside of it. However, you can also use scuba gear. As long as you have three pieces of scuba gear, you can enter this cave and not have any gas reduction. Now, I'm going to go past my tame in here. Now, notice how there is no negative effect in here. Normally, if I was to be in this cave, I would take a gas damage inside of this cave. However, because I have my scuba gear on, you can see that my damage that I'm taking, the tick that I'm taking, can be taken away. And I'll go ahead and add that on right there. And as long as I got that scuba, I don't actually take any damage. So there's one, two, three, four. There's a full scuba set. And I do not take cave damage while I'm in here. Now, that's if you cannot make your gas mask. Now, in order to show you, you can also just use a gas mask in order to save yourself. But if you don't have access to a gas mask, getting that scuba, all four of those pieces will allow you to go through any cave without taking those bonus damages. And it'll actually increase your uh, hypothermic and everything like that so you can survive much better. So basically, you can replace a gas mask with four pieces of scuba or a set of scuba. Now, next tip, right? Now that we've gone outside of the cave, we've got the more berries, we've got the actual stuff there. When you're using berries to tame things, this is something I'm not gonna, I mean, maybe I'll just go around, I'll just GCM and find something real quick. So when you are flying around and taming things, especially early game, you can use stim berries if you do not care about the taming effectiveness. Because what'll happen is any tame that eats berries naturally will eat berries at any rate, right? They will eat them until they're full. However, stim berries do not count as food, but they will increase the taming bar. So if you do not care about taming effectiveness, because at the cost of taming effectiveness, you can actually use any number of stim berries, if I can actually find anything that can be tamed right now. Um, you can use stim berries, and then it'll automatically tame this thing at an insanely faster rate, about two to three times faster. All right, so here is a parasaur family. I'm going to go ahead and knock one out. And you'll notice that level 20, right? So if you put stim berries in its inventory, even though the food is going down, it's still going to eat those stim berries. And it's going to gain taming. It's going to lose taming effectiveness, but it'll continue to tame. So if you just use stim berries, you can literally tame things about two to three times as fast. Huge advantage, especially early game, if you don't care about something like a parasaur, the actual level of it. It's a big, big thing that'll help you quickly. Now, Super easy, not too difficult, right? You can easily see how that would be useful. Now, again, it does destroy your taming effectiveness, so keep that in mind, but uh, you do not necessarily need to have taming effectiveness. People just like it. For a lot of tames, you don't actually need them to be good level, like a Parasaur, doesn't matter at all. Now, the next thing that I'm gonna go ahead and show you is, this is something that people commonly forget about. I don't know why, because it's something that everyone should remember. The actual concept of dismounting, right? So dismounting is one of the easiest things to do in Ark and to forget about. If I go ahead and hit E on something like a Gigantopithecus, you're gonna go ahead and get off the top of it and it's gonna get you the same exact thing every time. However, you can actually control the direction that you dismount off of a tame. Because if you hold A or D on keyboard, it'll allow you to dismount from that side of the tame and you can control which direction you actually fall off. Now, people forget that you can do that forward as well if I hold W or if I hold backwards it'll sit you on top of the tame. Now, by doing that, if you're in an area that's a little bit more dangerous, for example, you wanna be able to control which direction. So if I hold A, I'm gonna jump off to the left. If I hold D, I'm gonna jump off to the right. And then same thing with W and S for tames that allow you to do that. So control how you jump off. It doesn't seem like much, but it's a very useful tip and it's gonna save you a lot of time. So don't forget that, that's an easy one. Now the next one. This one is new to Ark Survival Ascended and people kind of know about it, but not really, not enough. In order to spoil meat instantaneously, what you can actually do is eat a bunch of food, 
have a toilet ready to go. Let's go ahead and get my toilet ready, right? And then with my toilet, you can actually put meat inside of a toilet and then poop in the toilet. And it's going to give you access to uh, spoiling all of your meat instantaneously. Now, all you have to do is place meat inside of it, whether it's before or after. Sit on the toilet and then hit the plus key to poop. You have to be ready in order to poop, unfortunately. So I'm going to go ahead and pop two or more of those. I doubt that I'll be able to. But this is new to Ark Survival Ascended. You can actually instantaneously spoil every single piece of meat inside of a toilet. So thousands and thousands and thousands of meat in a matter of like a, a, not even a half second. So use the toilet in order to actually poop inside of it and then actually get a ton of spoiled meat Im immediately. Now, my next tip, this is we're getting kind of longer and longer here. So I'm sorry, I'm trying to do this as quick as I can. Tip number 14, right? Killing baby gigas for XP is one of the most valuable things that you can do in the entire game. Now, this can be something that you can do straight off the bat, or you can unclaim a baby just like this options. Unclaim. The reason that this is a thing is because when you kill a Giganotosaurus, whether it's a enemies or a wild or anything like that, it is the highest actual multiplier in the entire game for killing one of these. I think it's like a wild level bonus of a thousand at level one, and then it gets much higher and higher every level you add on to it. So if you're looking to level any of your tames, I'm just going to go ahead and spawn in a, another one of these guys right here, right? This one's my Gigantopithecus. If I just got him to level 225, this one is going to probably be pretty high health. But basically what we can do is we can kill this thing. And then when we do kill it, it's going to get all the experience. Come on now. Now, unfortunately, he's decided that going in the water is in his best interest. But this is one of the best ways to level for any reason in the entire game. So you just saw that I technically killed a Giganotosaurus. And then we got 30 levels or 4,700 experience. So if you start breeding gigas, you can easily just kill them as soon as they're born or let your tames kill them and you will get a boost of XP on an astronomical level. Now, let's say you are not a big fan of that kind of uh, thing. The other way that you can gain XP at a really fast rate in, uh, in, in, in any way you want is to use a grinder. Now, using a grinder, you have the option to actually place down structures inside of that grinder. However, you can also place just generic resources. Now, come on, place. Let me go ahead and use it here. You can see that you can actually use wood to grind into thatch, and then you can use stone to grind into flint. Now, once you do those, every single time you do that, you're going to gain experience points. So you can have someone start it while you're sitting on top of a tame, and you can actually passively generate experience points. The person that starts it is only gonna be able to gain experience points themselves. However, if someone else is sitting on top of a tame and someone else starts it, that tame and the user are both going to get experience points. It is a very powerful thing, especially late game when you need some resources, you can just crank out a ridiculous amount and then go for like a thousand at a time. So all in all, all of these tips are something that should be incredibly helpful to you. That is 15 tips. I think it may have been technically 14 and then a few like small ones in the middle. Every single one of those things are very helpful and it's things that late game or early game people are using to take an advantage. So you should definitely do the same. Anyways, if you don't mind, smash that like button, leave a comment below, and then consider subbing to the channel. But other than that, teach. Ow.